Legalize nuclear bombs. Yo, what's up? This is the first time I'm actually recording my voice whilst modeling. Why? Apart from the fact that I'm lazy, I kind of feel like I should improve my speaking since I suck at explaining. Anyway, so there's this thing I haven't touched in Blender much, which is physics, which I, I don't know, it's right here. I haven't really needed it for any of my models, but you know, I kind of want to improve on that. So I decided today's the day, which means I came up with the idea of modeling a keychain with two keys or maybe a single key hanging on it and being lifted up by one of my characters. I know it's a bit more laid back, but I'm a burial. I'm so tired of modeling characters. Whilst I was out and about today, I almost lost my keys, which gave me the idea to model some keys and add some physics in Blender. So let's, let's get straight to it. Oh my mama, we lit! Yeah! <laughs> right, firstly, I kind of delete everything except the camera and reset the position on the camera by pressing alt r and alt g then going into side view rotating it appropriately and placing it back so we have this view then i'm at a reference image i found a simple image online turning the opacity down usually i'd scale my references but it's not that important at the moment I just realized I did all this and forgot to press record. I guess we're starting over. Ah! I add a cylinder and scale it down. Selecting the top and bottom faces like this, I'm going to inset and then inset again and scale excluding the Z axis. When you scale this down, it makes a dip. To prevent this from happening, you can scale and press Shift Z to exclude the Z axis. And once again, inset. There's actually a tool to instantly create a hole between these two faces. Press F3 and search up bridge edge loops. I've already used it recently, so it's at the top. Press that, and there we go. For the bottom, I'll select these faces, extrude them along the X axis. Then press scale X zero to flatten that. Now I can select these and extrude them all the way to the end. From here, where is my, where are my arrows? Yo, oh, position everything correctly. We're missing an edge here. So I'm just gonna add an edge to that. And once again, align it. I can do the same for the bottom. Actually, with the bottom, we have a small issue because these bumps right here, these two bumps go into the indent. For now, I'm going to create an extra line. To create these indents, I'm going to select these and just press I to inset faces, then scale along the Z axis to bring them down. Then you can actually just select these faces right here delete the faces, and then fill these areas in. Now, how am I going to do the indents? I don't know how I'm going to do the indents. I'm a burial. What if I exclude these areas? We can delete these faces, then fill them in. That kind of fixes the issue. Ooh. That doesn't actually fix the issue. I take that back. What if I create an extra loop cut? align them. I'm gonna do two loop cuts in here and delete these faces instead. Then fill these all in. Now for this loop, you know what, let me add another loop cut. If I bevel this, yeah, I can bevel this. Can I bevel this? No, I can, I can, I can, because then that's four. Yeah, yeah, no, I can, I can, I can, I can, we're chilling. I'm gonna add three. Make sure all these are straight. This, I'm gonna fix with a bevel. And since this is a, uh, one, two, three, four, oh five, God, six, bro. hexagon? Hey, yeah, that's bro. a hexagon, man, right? Fuck, oh, yeah, 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 okay. Since this is a hexagon, you can just take the knife tool, 
Take, yo. Take this. Go here. Knife that. Knife that. Now you got two squares. That fixes that issue. And now you can just carry on with the rest. Oh, fuck. How do I do that? Huh? How do? Yo. Huh? Yo. Get. How do? Wh what did I press? What did I press to get this? What did I press to get this? How do I get? How do I get rid of this? Escape. Oh, okay. There we go. You know. I did it again. What am I pressing? Am I actually slow? Okay, never mind. Huh? Wait, no, it, it pops up. Wait, no, it pops up literally every single time I press a letter. Yo, what? Huh? I'm on Japanese- Brother. That, you know, that explains it. So I'm gonna delete this. And use this kind of go around and then fill that in for the uh, the bumps or whatever this is called i'm just gonna add a bunch of loop cuts actually let me do this one by one just so i have control for this part i think i'm just gonna delete this fill that in oh wait that kind of works if i bevel this with no no edges Actually, that that don't work. I take the back. Wait, no, that do work. If I bevel this with one, and I take the knife tool and go from here to here to here, that creates... Yeah, that's all squares. Okay. Then do the same on the other side. Okay, now I'm just going to align the rest. I'm actually going to create one more loop cut in between here. I mean, let's be real, it doesn't have to be perfect because every key is different. Since this one's on the rim, I'm gonna delete these faces and use those edges for extra detail. This I can once again bevel and then attach to here. You know what? That doesn't look bad. I'm happy with that. So, oh, I forgot to fill that in. I just realized- oh wait, where's my key? The ridges of my key kind of go under this. Yeah, the entire section needs to go lower except this bit. It kind of need to go like this. Yeah, and then all of this needs to be scaled down. The edges need to be scaled down even more. This entire circle needs to be marked. So now I can attach these two. I need to add an extra edge. Do something like this. Can the loop cut work, please? Thank you. And then add a loop cut. I can attach these. Link these two together. God damn it, there's another line. You know what? I didn't even need that line anyway. It's fine. Okay, then I can extrude these faces. Extrude scale Z. Bring them out. And then go shrink flatten. Why is it doing that? Press G twice, scale that down a bit. Do the same with this. I just looked at my key in the bottom here. This area is also hollow. Maybe I can just pull this down and call it a day. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I added a texture. What do you mean? I want to make another key. I could just duplicate this key hang it on a chain, put some physics on it and call it a day. But that's a bit boring, which means if I steal this part, duplicate, separate by selection, hide the other key. Right, what are we, what are we thinking? What if I make this a bit thinner? Cause this kind of looks like the blade to a sword. And then here we can make the loop to hang it on the keychain. That's actually kind of cute. This fridge, Honestly makes too much noise, so I made a little contraption it's between here attached to a stick going all the way down to here just so I have a barrier to block the sound from the fridge.
I cannot be trusted with headphones. My previous pair of these was broken because I put them in the washing machine inside of the pocket of one of my pants. This is... There's more on the back... Yo... This is definitely my favorite pair of headphones. The exact same ones I used to have, but not broken. Okay, for the keychain, I'm thinking just curves. Actually, no. Screw that. Get a cube. Uh, screw that as well. Get a circle. Rotate it five. Rotate it along the X. Uh, I mean Z by 90. Wait, am I tripping? Uh, I mean 45, not 90. My bad, my bad. Scale it down along the Y. Then bevel. Wait, does that not work? Can you not bevel? Damn, I thought you could. That's a bit sad. Path. Then go to geometry, object, select the up. Pause. Turn it into, convert to a curve. Path, object, this, select your circle. And it is at a 45 degree angle. Select your circle, press shift A. Sorry, not shift A, control A and apply rotation. Yo, what am I doing? Bring that up. Okay, that looks good. Cause this easily fits. Yeah. Since this is still a curve, you wanna go to object, convert, mesh. That turns it into a mesh, crazy, I know. And go F3, then grid. Fill should be there. It should automatically fill it up for you. How do you get it so that it shows what keys you're pressing. I should have had that enabled this entire time. Well, how do you how do you enable that? Oh. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, that's so much better. I do want to bring it down a bit though. Why didn't I have this enabled earlier? I'm actually so stupid. Well, now you can see what I'm pressing. What if I mark a seam in the middle and UV project that oh no i don't know if i want to keep that bit hold up mark seam how does that part look yeah that's actually quite good mark seam uv unwrap yeah so we have two straight lines okay i feel like i'm doing something wrong render image oh fuck me i forgot to plug the right thing in it's supposed to be creating so much more rust. I don't- I fear I am tripping. Uh, why is it not showing up? I don't understand. I don't understand. I made an instant soup out of hatred because this isn't working. Let's try this without that and just a simple noise. <clears throat> Yo, the voice cracks are crazy today. And a simple noise texture. Oh, so now we're working. Okay, so basically you're telling me it's a skill issue on my side. Okay, I see how it is. If this worked, then why is that not working? I don't understand. Since this is clearly black and white, why why is it not working? Why is that? Oh, maybe if I set that- Ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, now we're cooking. Working in cycles is a nightmare, honestly. It takes forever to load. That's why it was going so slow. I'm actually so slow today. Look at how much faster that is. I'm actually retarded. Look at that difference. Mix. Color. Put these into each other. Oh, that's the wrong one. Okay. And then this has to be non-color too. Overlay. Boom. I want to have spots of rust in between these. And now plug you in. So now there's bits of rust in between these areas. Okay, for the ridges, what I could potentially do is take the dots, copy all of that, paste it here, and mess with the mapping. So maybe stretch them out a bit. Yeah, that kind of works. And then scale them like this. All right, it looks pretty good. To bake textures, I always save a copy and call it Q. 
keys fake and go to that file. Just separate these to make my life a bit easier. Since these are all on the same texture, what we have to do is we have to merge these together. You can select your loop, your sword and your key and press Ctrl J. Add a new image texture, press new. I'm gonna go with a 4K texture, so times that by four. But the name doesn't really matter to be honest. Copy that, paste it here, paste it here. You want to make sure your texture is selected and your keys are selected. Make sure you're in cycles because this only works in cycles. And go down to where it says bake. I like baking the normal first because it can give a clear overview of your bake and see if you've made any mistakes. Margin size, I'm gonna bring down to maybe four and press bake. Here is the output, which seems to be right. File, image, save as. Instead of the normal, we can bake the diffuse. We want to take off direct and indirect because this will bake in the lighting if you have these ticked on. So you want to make sure that's ticked off. And press bake. There we go. Here is that map. So go image, save as. And instead of key normal, we do key color. Here's a roughness. Once again, image, save, save as, instead of key color. We now do key roughness and I once again save a copy. This one is going to be keys before, that's not it, bake. And save a copy. Now we can stay on the keys blend and remove the procedural textures and just call it keys. Then get our textures that we baked, starting off with the keys color, put that in. Can't see shit. There we go, that's the color. Bring the metallic up then this but obviously that's not going to work so we need a normal map in between setting rgb to non-color and the roughness right here there we go now the nice thing about this is you can actually go to eevee and you can finally have a nice viewport again to look at. Holy, I hate working in cycles sometimes. Obviously the textures won't be as pretty, but that doesn't matter. I'll just switch back to cycles when I'm rendering. So now physics, all these lights are <laughs> attached to this. Ignore that. Bring it down, rotate along the Z 90 degrees. That's on there. Let's start off with one key, this one. And go to physics. Where is it? Physics. So obviously right now when we press play, nothing happens. Which means we're gonna have to add physics. So I'm gonna add rigid body to both the loop and the key. Which means now once we press play, I don't know if you can see, but they slowly, well slowly, when we press play, they now kind of explode away from each other. Why is that? Because Blender's physics sucks. It's currently calculating using a convex hole. So if I switch this to box, for example, it's using this entire box. So if I set both these to box, it's still going to do the exact same thing because these meshes are going through each other. We can fix this by setting this to mesh. When setting this to mesh, it calculates this entire mesh. Now realizing there is a hole right here and there is a loop going through the hole. Now, when I press play, these both fall at the same time. This one isn't stuck in one place yet. There's two ways to fix this. You can either set this to passive. Passive means it's not gonna move. Or you can set this to animated. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with animated for now because I feel like the result, the final result with animated is better. Let me go back to passive because passive had a better result for now. You might be you might be wondering why it's floating and that's because there's a margin which means it's going to leave 0.0 meters between this area which we don't want. So let's bring that down to 0.01 for example on both of these. It's going to lessen that but it's still going to be there. So if we bring this even lower to for example 0.0 5, 0.005, sorry, my bad. It's gonna be even less. Now it's actually so little that it falls right through, which is why I prefer the animated. It just looks so much better. Now you can see that it's still leaving a sort of 
Yeah, I mean, you can't really fix this too much. You can lessen this, but obviously the lower you get with this number, the more likely it's going to be that these two meshes are going to fall apart. Actually, this works. So what's actually fun about this is that you can keyframe this. So let's say, for example, I want to move my loop from here to here. That's actually moving, which means now if I press play, this key follows along. We can add both keys on this. I don't know how that's going to look like, but we can we can try. Set it to mesh, set the margin to 0.005, maybe 0.002 actually, my bad. And test it out. Oh god. That's happening because these meshes are colliding within each other. Why? I have no fucking clue. I'm actually going to turn the mass down to like 0.2 since these aren't that heavy. That fixes the issue. And increasing the margin seemed to also fix the issue, unless that was me changing the mass. Hold up. If I bring this back to 0 0.02, does that fix it or that? Okay, no, that all depends on the margin. To improve the quality of this animation, you can go down to your scene and go down to the rigid body world and increase the sub steps per frame. I set mine to 60. You can obviously increase this if you go to 100. It's gonna take even longer to render and it'll improve the quality of the animation. I don't really recommend you go above 100 because then it's just gonna take forever. <laughs> it's so cute. Legalize nuclear bombs.